So how was your break? Oh, good. Yeah, Vegas was amazing. Vegas? You're not, I know you're not old enough to gamble, so what did you do besides the lights game? Come on, Vince. You know what they say. What happens in Vegas? Uh, Campbell, can you move? Me and Vince are trying to record the show. You don't want to go in there. Wait, why? We've been off for two weeks. LAFC's back this weekend. We've got a show to do. Okay, but I warn you. Uh, uh, guys, what is going on? You, you look rough. Bro, not that you guys would ever understand, but me and this fool, we got some mean hangovers, bro. Wh what? I got this. Jay, I went to Santa Barbara for seven years, and I stand before you, not a doctor, so I know a thing or two about hangovers. But Eli here is not old enough to drink. Nah, dude, this is a different thing. This is a Nations League hangover. You know when you have a steady diet of MLS and then all of a sudden you get two weeks of raw, uncut, conca calf action injected right into your eyeballs? No, but, but I, I mean, I watched Canada over the break and I didn't end up like you guys. Canada didn't even make it out of the group stage, bro. <laughs> Dude, that's like shotgunning in all duels. The next thing you know, you're ripping off your pants, revealing your pizza themed banana hammock while you're singing Smith at karaoke. I, I never did that, by the way. Uh, Dude, we're not talking about Canada. We're talking about medals. Real stuff, bro. Okay, well, whatever, Jay. But, but Eli, didn't you say the Nations League was pointless? No, I remember. And you did it on our show, which is on the internet. Internet doesn't forget, bro. I, I mean, it's going to be hard to keep it quiet. You know, it's out there now, Eli. You did say that, bro. I know what I said. But you guys are being so loud. I still hear in my head pumping the USA, USA, USA chants. Plus, the baby's sleeping. Shh. The, the baby? Eli, there's no baby here. Not again! I gotta go, guys. Damn you, Bretos! Bro, I don't know about no baby. Bretos? I used to like pizza until you talked about that. and welcome back to the 110 Football Show. I'm Connor Kolopsis, and I hope you guys all had a good two-week break because it's all LAFC from this moment on. Breaking news, new logo, check it out. Sick rebrand, hashtag sick. Hashtag I need that t-shirt. T-shirt, look at that, cool. Anyway, uh, Vince, I didn't get to ask you back there, but how was your break? Uh, you know what, it wasn't very bad. Uh, I got to see friends and family, okay. caught up on some TV, Okay. and I got in a couple Twitter arguments with LAFC fans and Galaxy fans on multiple occasions. So like the usual, right? Bingo. Boom. Um, I'm glad to hear that you're doing what you love. Speaking of, remember how I said what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas? I do, it was like 10 minutes ago. It turns out that if you bring an entire camera crew with you, that, that's just a complete lie. So without further ado, check out this behind the scenes glimpse of my road trip to see the Las Vegas lights in action. here at the Las Vegas Lights first match of the season. We came all the way to Vegas. This has been crazy, and I'm so glad to see the locals out here supporting their club. Duke is in, Duke! Doubles the lead for Las Vegas! Bryce Duke scored! Bryce Duke scored! Yes! Bryce Duke's got Come on! Get it in! Oh! Get in! Get it in! Bryce Duke scored! So it's been fun here in Vegas. So back to you guys in the studio. Yeah. Back, back to you, future Connor. That was pretty incredible. I mean, you were literally right there. Bryce Duke scores his first goal as a professional. You get to see the first Vegas Lights win of 2021. You know what? There's a joke in there about you being lucky and in Vegas and all, but you're not of age, so I won't even go there. You know what? I appreciate that, Vince. It's a family-friendly show. But, you know, I'm looking at the prompter right now, and it says that, that coming up, we're, we're going to watch the horror show that was the highlights of LAFC versus NYCFC. That, that's just too graphic for our young viewers, Vince. Plus, it was like two weeks ago. Think of the children, Vince. Sorry, Connor. I don't write the show. Wait, I thought you, like... Roll the highlights! Oh, boy. 
You're not excited for these? I am most definitely not excited. I'm excited when there's gonna be more people in the stands. I can't That's wait for this that, weekend. yeah. I mean, here's a goal. It's a beautiful goal, actually. Yeah, so get a little fired up for it. I mean, oh, yay! Look, you could have finished that. That's a tap in. That's like a 100% chance, 10 times out of 10. It's just beautiful football. It was point. beautiful football, and it should have continued. Uh, but this is not the this is not the spot for beautiful football. That's maybe the time where, you know, you just clear it. There's other heirs, though. There's other guys that could have stepped up in that moment. In other news, Matt got a man of the match with Canada. That's not LAFC. <laughs> and this is not LAFC either. Did you yell? Did you scream out? I, I screamed, Carlos, no! Yep, that's probably the right reaction. And then this was this was a turning point in the match. I thought that maybe we could salvage a win after this. Very confusing moment. I had no idea he had two yellow cards. And to your point, it should have been a turning point. But it then, was a turning point, but not for LAFC. Yeah, you're up a man. They're not even fully with enough guys in the box, and that happens. But we're going to talk about it. We'll, we'll break it down. I'm going to say it. That was offside. Hot Poss take. Hot possibly, take. but he's onside if it counts. This is disgusting. That is an ugly standings. A lot of teams I don't like at the very top. And are we not on this? We're not even on the first page. Not on the first page. There we are. There ninth. We are. Well, remember what we said. We need to be on the first page by the time this home stand is done. Because if we're not, hit the panic button. Hit the panic button. Maybe right At least we're not FC Dallas. That's what everyone says. All right, clearly break time is over, and LAFC have a lot of work to do. But Vince, you wanted to hammer home this this point, you know, at the touchscreen. So, Uncle Jay, while we head over there, why don't you tell everyone what's on the rest of the show? Uh, oh, okay. Um, after two weeks off, Max Bredos is super maxed and relaxed, previewing LAFC versus Houston Dynamo this Saturday, bro. Orale! We got a Vegas-inspired LASD class of 21 this week as we find out which player is most likely to lose all his bread gambling. But first, Vince is going to take Connor through how not to defend set pieces on Turning Point. All right, Vince, we're here at the touchscreen. What was so important that we needed to go over a match from almost three weeks ago? I mean, that seriously feels like a lifetime ago. Everything feels like a lifetime ago to people these days. I mean, their attention spans are literally so small. Huh? Damn Gen Z. Oh, I remember LAFC versus NYCFC, right? Yes. Time for... Turning point. Point. I beat you. All right, so what are we gonna be talking about from the match? It's a hot topic for LAFC fans. It's how to defend set pieces. Hasn't been great this year. And in this game, it was pivotal. Uh-oh, we don't like this. Yeah, so let's, let's start right from the top. This is obviously the game winning goal. It comes from a corner. Again, I've already talked about it. Set piece defending hasn't been great. There's a misconception though. A lot of people drone on and on about, oh, well, they're in zone marking. That's what does it. Almost every team these days plays a mix of zone and man. And that's exactly what LAFC does. What they do is they try to get basically kind of walls in the big areas. These are the most dangerous areas, your front post and right in the middle of the field. And then you have some man markers. So they have three man markers. So it is a mixed system. I, I, I get that. But one thing that sticks out for me is this guy. He's all alone. If you're saying it's a hybrid mix, uh, man marking and zonal marking, why isn't Mark Anthony K marking number 17? Right, so in hindsight, it makes a lot of sense, right? You wish he could have man marked him because the guy's wide open. But think about this. This is an outswinger. That ball's coming from inside to outside. It's gonna be almost impossible to get it right on this guy's head without shifting over. But keep in mind, shifting over is important. As the play progresses in a zone system, you have to know where to go from those zones. And you know what? It trickled down from there, the mistakes. Because uh -oh. as we run it, watch this guy's run here. Latif is supposed to be marking that guy. Just watch how nonchalantly he lets that guy go. And then Danny, he's he's looking now, but when that guy gets over there, he's gonna just basically say, what's up, bro? And then let him get the header. Watch that, bro. Wins the first header. The cardinal rule is this. If there's two touches by the opponent in your box, it's probably a bad thing. I'm gonna pause it here and just say, hot take. You know what, I'll just show you. I'm you not even gonna say it. Are you taking my job? Take. I'm taking your job. Okay. I'm gonna do a markup. Okay. Whoa. Uh, you can take my job, but don't this get that close, bro. Is okay. offside. And I'll show you. See here? He's offside. Look at it. It's like. You're like, I, a, uh, okay, you're clear, like a drunk guy doing a baseball line there. <laughs> clearly, I'm joking. But in all seriousness, a lot of people think this was offside. 
if that's not clear and obvious, why didn't they go to VAR? Well, a lot of people might have been right because it wasn't clear and obvious. They can only use the cameras that they have. And we saw even from that first look, tough to tell if it was clear and obvious. So here's the real question. What should LAFC do better? You know, it's decision making. I don't think it's the man marking versus zonal marking. What do we say in the zonal marking? Just because you're zonal marking doesn't mean you don't attack areas and you're not aware of what's around you. Be more aware of your surroundings, do your job, and then just have that mentality that you're not going to give up set pieces. Well, thanks for that, Vince. Nothing gets me more pumped than LAFC defending set pieces. That you was a joke. You have to be the only one. Oh, it was a joke. Good. You don't <laughs> do many of those. Anyway, I guess that's what I signed on for, right? Both of us. Ben, can you play some sad standing to sitting music, please? Sad sitting music? Oh, yeah, that is sad. Like, I had a tough day, man. Just come home from work, or come home from an LAFC game, Where thought we your lost team was gonna win. The last minute. You were up a man, give a <sighs> corner kick. You know, Ben's got an entire catalog of standing to sitting music in different moods. Yeah, but what about sitting to standing? Everybody knows that there's no such thing as sitting to standing music, you silly goose. But since we're here and in our chairs, and it's a pivotal moment in the LAFC season, let's don our manager hats once again. And I guess for channeling Bob Bradley, that means his iconic LAFC dad hat, kaboom. Looks let's good play on some 110 manager mode. Ooh, wow, can I touch it? I don't think so. It's a big grab. All right. Hey, boss, we're getting a lot of interest from overseas for some of our talented young players. Those teams want to close the deal this summer. How should we proceed with negotiations knowing our best players could be leaving in the middle of our season? This is a tough one. Not a lot of MLS teams face this question, but I would say this. LAFC from day one has said that they will be a selling team. They will find the young talent and they will move them on to their next destination. You don't get a Diego Rossi without telling him that you will eventually sell him to Europe. So unfortunately, this is the game that we play. And I say we've got to move him on because that's going to start the cycle anew. And don't think for a minute that LAFC doesn't already have new targets identified. You know, if Diego Rossi is to move on, do you think he's going to Everton or Totten? Ooh, good question. You know, I think Everton seems like a good place. They have taken a chance on a guy from America before, although he played for a team we won't talk about. Anyway, I'm going next. Hey boss, we have four players either missing or returning from international duty. We have two matches upcoming this week. How should we handle the starting 11 for the match against Houston on Saturday? Well, because I'm wearing this dad hat that Bob Bradley wears all the time, switch it up. A lot of people, fans specifically, are not too happy with the likes of Mark Anthony K. and Palacios. I'm not gonna speak on my opinion, but I will say it may be good to get some other guys some starting time. Maybe put in Sifu, maybe maybe bring Latif back into the mix. Or, I know I'm going to say this crazy, maybe put in Pancho Ginella in the midfield. Maybe, maybe, maybe. And as for a player like Palacios, maybe start Marco Farfan. I don't know. Maybe that's why we got full back depth. I don't know, Bob. Maybe get it together. Anyway, that's what I think. Really? After his man of the match performance, no Mark? No. No Mark. All right. Well, Connor, it sounds like we solved that, so clip that off. Get it to LAFC right away. Oh, you, you think they'd listen to us? No, but at least they know we're trying. Aw, that's sweet. And speaking of trying, Max Bredos is trying his best to look as chill as possible while still delivering viewers all the info they need before LAFC takes on Houston. You might call it too chill. We call it maxing and relaxing. Welcome once again into the Ponderosa here. Man, it's hot. Where's my Mai Tai? They'll be coming. LAFC playing the Dynamo for the second time this season. I thought they should have got all three points when they met in Houston, tough place to play. They didn't. Certainly look to do that Saturday night, late night. This is a very undersold rivalry with the Dynamo. Think about it. 2019, the Dynamo were the opponent when LAFC lifted the supporter shield that night. Go back to 2018, US Open Cup semifinals. Diego Rossi hat trick, but it wasn't enough. Dynamo win in penalties. Also that year, in October, my personal favorite, the rain game. And it really wasn't the rain game, it was the storm game. Lightning, all sorts of crazy weather, which we could use right now in Los Angeles. Long delays. They had game one of the NLCS between the Dodgers and Brewers going on. I will not forget it. And of course, Carlos Vela coming up big late. 
Let's have some more of this. This is going to be big. It's the return after three weeks. LAFC looking to get it done. Houston Dynamo looking for their first ever win against LAFC in MLS regular season. Twice turning away from pressure and sending a beautiful one to Diego Rossi, who just didn't quite catch it. First time to Blessing. Blessing for Corey Baird. Incredible extra passing from LAFC. Rona and Antuesta involved as it crosses it towards Patcher. That will do it. It finishes honors even. Now, for my favorite segment on the show. Hey, Vince, do you know why this is my favorite segment on the show? Could it be because you pick players that doom LAFC every week? What? No, 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 not, not at all. It's, it's never been about LAFC or the teams they play, Vince. For me, it's always been about crushing the little tiny sliver of hope in that mind of yours week in, week out. Well, good luck with that. Uh, if you want to keep Connor from what appears to be the genesis of a supervillain's origin story, or more importantly, win some prizes, remember to send us your two players to watch before kickoff of the LAFC match. And that's right. Join us. Win some prizes. One player, each team will post everything on our social channels to remind you to get your picks in. And since I'm king, as everyone knows, <laughs> I'll go first. First off. Tyler Pasher, Houston Dynamo. Look at those sick highlights. Look at it. Just look at it. Canadian, first of all. What highlights? What? Keep going. <laughs> Tyler Pasher, he's Canadian. He scored a, against us last time out. He's been Houston's breakout player this season, and he's lethal in the attack. So that's why I think maybe he'll score against LFC again. Next up, Carlos Vela. I picked him not too long ago for my players to watch. Didn't perform too well. But Carlos Vela, as Adam, is in a point in the season where he needs to put up statistics. He only has like one assist to his name this season. And for the best player in the league, as we all know, it's not good enough. So I think this is going to be his game. Hattrick. Call me. Hat wow. I would love to see that. Uh, and you want to know why? Because I also picked Carlos Vela oh. as my LAFC player. And I agree with you. He needs to start putting up numbers. He's the captain of this team. But more importantly, man, after that miss against NYCFC, oh. get mad, Carlos. I love when Carlos plays mad, and I think he's a better player for it. He's going to pick this team up. You know, Bob Bradley's team rarely loses two matches in a row. Think about that. Very original first pick, i got to say. Hey, 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 hey. I'm going way off the board for the second one because I do got to beat you because somehow you picked fullbacks and win. I'm going Darwin Quintero. <laughs> yes, he has not started a match this season and has actually played less than 90 minutes the entire season. But do you know what his nickname is? What? El Scientifico del Gol. Do you know what that means? I think you can know what it means without knowing Spanish. Scientist of goals. So that's what he's going to get from me. He's going to be my breakout pick. He's a good dribbler as well. Decent passer, can play make a little bit. So I think we're going to see the return of El Scientifico del Gol. Hot take. He's not going to play one minute against us. Best of luck, Vince, and everyone else out there. You guys are going to need it because I'm so good at this game. <laughs> but Vince, I'm assuming you'd fancy yourself to be a bit of a gambling man, right? Why would you say that? Well, because if you think you're going to beat me in players to watch, you must think you're pretty lucky, huh? Oh, this again. But we wanted to know which LAFC players might want to think twice about their luck. So we asked them in this week's LAFC Class of 21. Boom. Teammate most likely to lose all their money gambling. Oh, Bryce. Yeah, yeah, Bryce. I'm gonna go with Tony. I mean, he's not old enough to gamble, but I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna go with Tony. You're not either. Yeah. Oh, uh, it's gotta be either Danny or Tristan, the two Vegas guys. Yeah? Tristan. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, he's a Las Vegas guy. <laughs> Probably Danny Masowski. Just because we're from Vegas, but he'll lose more than me. Let's say Cheeky. I don't think Cheeky would probably lose. I was going to say Carlos, but he's not going to lose all his money. Right? <laughs> I'm not Carlos, because he's the luckiest guy I've ever met, and he'll tell you that. All right, guys, this is the part in the show where we usually throw to Eli's dorm room in Syracuse. But as you can see, he's back here in the studio with us, and Eli, hey, hey, Eli, what are you doing? Have you guys seen a baby in here, like, at all? A baby? I, we thought you were joking about that earlier. Eli, you're supposed to be here to tee up your segment, Eli. Plus, it's a baby. I think it can look after itself, right? 
Uh, you're probably right. I know I've only known him for about a week, but I could tell he's a tough kid, just like his dad. Uh, are you telling me that you're no, the... No, just, Connor, let it go. Let Eli tee up his segment and get back to searching for that baby. I mean, can't have child services coming back again. <sighs> For this week's Lesser is More, I was inspired by our trip to Vegas, and I'm gonna tell you why the light should say, no thanks MLS, check it out. Umberto, Umberto. Wouldn't it be cool if the people who said what happens in Vegas stayed in Vegas? It would. Recently, I interviewed Brent Lashbrook, the owner of the Las Vegas Lights, and he's so confident. How confident is he? Great question, me. Well, for starters, he loves what he's built in Sin City. How much does he love it? Calm down, me. I'm getting there. When you go to a lights game, they have a lot of entertainment value in addition to the match. A llama, kiddie pool, drive your car up to the touchline seats, and let's not forget about the Elvis mascot. I don't know what's going on here, yes. but I love it. It's a unique experience all around. So you'd think it's only a matter of time before they leave USL and become an expansion team like Cincy, Nashville, or like when Minnesota did it from the NASL, right? Right? Wrong. Lashbrook feels that if they joined MLS, his club would lose its identity. And that's crazy to me. So many USL clubs are founded with the hopes of being an MLS expansion team, and along comes this dude, and he just wants to create something fun. There's definitely something to be said about that. Is this my line? You have no lines. Las Vegas wants to bring people together and support their local club, all while having a really great time. I think that's the best thing ever. We could all use more of that. So maybe what's happening in Vegas will actually stay in USL. Thanks for that, Eli. And Vince, that is our show. The international break is officially over. LAFC is back, the fans are back, and I, for one, could not be more excited. That's right, it's about time. And don't forget, check us out before and after the Houston match this weekend. Max Bredos is gonna be joining us. He'll be there for the virtual tailgate and with Connor and I for your post-match reactions. That's right. Hey, you know what? Speaking of being back, Jay, have you beaten that Nations League hangover yet? Jay? Well, oh, sorry. Hey, Eli. Bro, you still got the baby? What's going on here, dude? When we went to Vegas, I heard all y'all shouting, Vegas, baby! So, I got myself a Vegas baby! Isn't he so cute? Oh, that doesn't sound right. Bro, you gotta return that baby, dude. Don't listen to him, Umberto. Let's say hi to Uncle Vincent, Uncle Connor. Oh, hi. hi! He's so oh. cute. Hi, Umberto. So adorable. We'll see you guys at the he bank. Looks like Daddy. He looks a lot like Max Brown. The next thing you know, you're ripping off your pants, revealing your banana hammock, and you're singing karaoke at the house. Oh, damn it. Well, guess what? That's not entirely. <clears throat> that was incredible. You were literally right there as Bryce. Uh, <laughs> Bryce. Bryce. Change your name, Bryce. Drive your car up to the borderline seats. T borderline? What the, f the borderline? Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel. I did.